3D printing is pretty cool. It allows the average maker to get the most complex geometry parts with only one tool, a 3D printer. The problem is that as of right now, the best you can do with a regular 3D printer is get parts out of plastic or resin. And you can do a lot with those materials. But what if your goal is going more hardcore? What if your goal is going metal? This video was brought to you by Kiwico! As you might know, I'm a big fan of engines, especially rocket engines. They are able to produce power using only cheap fuels and clever mechanisms. And to me, that is just beautiful. I love to build them and test them. But because I have limited skills and a finite set of tools, I mostly resort to 3D printing. As you might imagine, high temperature engines and 3D printing plastic are not very compatible, which turns my passion into a paradoxical mess. Of course, I'm aware there's metal 3D printers in the market, but they are not exactly affordable. And unless Jeff Bezos makes a healthy contribution to my Patreon account, I don't think I'm getting one in the foreseeable future. Engines aside, it would be amazing to be able to 3D print metal parts. Getting super strong and temperature resistant parts without needing fancy equipment and a lot of skill would be wonderful. So what choices do I have? Normally when I can't buy, I DIY. So I could probably just try to build my own metal 3D printer. And I did. That didn't go so well. Casting is a good choice, but becomes really hard when you're talking about high temperature metals like steel. Machining falls on the same category, and for more complex geometries, doesn't really work. In the past, I used this resin with ceramic particles to get 3D printed ceramic parts. To do that, I would 3D print the parts in the resin, burn the resin off, and then get a fully ceramic part. That actually worked pretty well. So the question here is, can I do the same thing with metal? Surprisingly, you can. I found this company called Virtual Foundry that makes these spools of 3D printed filament that have metal impregnated into the plastic. In essence, it's just like in the case of the ceramic resin. It's just plastic mixed with metal powder. You print the part in a regular printer, burn off the plastic and cha -da, you get a metal part. In theory, I've been around long enough to know that things are never that simple. But anyway, I got some of that metal filament to test. But before we do that, let's go through the process. The first step is to choose a 3D model to print. Because I love engines, I chose a Aerospike rocket nozzle. Obviously. The obvious next step is to use my beloved Not Jordan to 3D print the rocket nozzle. But because the filament I'm using has bronzed powder in it, which might damage my fragile brass nozzle, I got a new and improved super resistant ruby nozzle. The ruby nozzle, like the subtle name indicates, has ruby on the tip that is as tough as nails, which is a weird expression because nails break all the time. Next, I 3D printed my rocket nozzle in bronze filament using 100% infill so I could get a solid part. The part came out looking pretty nice but still had plastic in it, so the next step was getting rid of it. To get rid of the plastic, we need to burn it off, but as you can imagine that is not as simple as putting cookies in the oven. The part needs to go through two stages, debinding and sintering. During the debinding stage, the plastic burns off slowly. Actually, it sublimates. Once the plastic is all gone, we ramp up the temperature to unify the metal that was left behind. To do these stages, the part needs to go through a thermal cycle that can reach hundreds of degrees. And to do that, you're gonna need a programmable kiln. Luckily, I have one. Its name is Barracha. Because the part is gonna get very, very hot, it gets to a point in which it almost melts. And because of that, it gets very, very mushy. It only takes gravity to deform it. To give some support to the pot, I put it in a ceramic cup and buried it in aluminum sand. Then I put it on the kiln and made it go through the debinding stage to burn off the plastic. This process took about 8 hours to be finished, so in the meantime I cleaned my bathroom, took the trash out, took a nap, watched some YouTube, went for a jog, ate some cereal, took another nap and removed the sand cup from the kiln. And I sprinkled it with sintering carbon because the next stage is the sintering stage and that means very high temperatures. The purpose of the sintering carbon is to protect the part from the evil oxygen that likes to oxidize stuff. I put the white cup back into the kiln and waited. I did a lot of waiting in this project. I got so bored that I ended up watching this video on YouTube about an Aussie guy trying to kill trees with an axe made out of trees. I also watched one in which he created a giant Beyblade. I don't know, but I think he should probably put some rockets on it. YouTube is a weird place. And that's why I love it. Okay. Here you go. Moment of truth. I'm gonna start by removing this. Oh, there's a lot of carbon left. You see that? 
I can reutilize this. Is it good? Is it bad? Oh, it doesn't seem too bad. Are you seeing this? Look, I still have to clean it, but it's a little bit warped. That I can tell you. Let me try to remove it and put it aside. Okay, here is our part. Okay, let's clean the part. Oh, I can feel it's metal. It's metal, all right. It's a little bit warped. Can you see that? It's a little bit warped. And also, look, you can see the shiny bronze in the bottom. Okay, you can see it. I made a hole in this part as a, and as you can see, it's solid all the way through. So all the plastic is gone, everything centered, and it's all solid. So the part was a little bit warped and a little bit smaller, but that's exactly what happens when you burn the 10% plastic out of it. It shrinks. The warping probably happened because I didn't pack the alumina sand well enough. It's not a complete success, but it was literally my first attempt. And what did I get? A solid bronze aerospike nozzle. It's pretty amazing. Just think about that. I've been trying to use 3D printing to get solid metal parts for a long time. And here I have it. It's awesome. And not expensive at all. Sponsor time. So my sister is mad at me. Because it's summer and I don't want my sisters melting into the couch watching cringy TikToks made by other greasy teenagers, I got her a kid from KiwiCo. KiwiCo creates these cool hands-on projects that teach kids about science, technology, engineering, heart and math. STEAM! This time they sent a project to build a citric acid and baking soda rocket. And that is where the problem began. I mean, they know I love rockets. I couldn't contain myself. I waited for Luana to be finished assembling the rocket and then I tested it before she could. She wasn't too mad about that, but because the rocket worked so well, it ended up on the top of our roof. And that's a problem, because I'm not getting it. I'm afraid of heights. If you also want to pretend that you're ordering the project for your kids, and then you steal it when they are finished assembling it, well, you can get 50% off your first month of any crate by going to qecocom slash 50 Link in the description down below. By checking the link in the description down below, you're helping your kid, yourself, and me. Everyone wins. I mean, except Luana. Back to the project. As good as bronze is, is not enough to satisfy my hunger for metal, so I got some steel filament. I 3D printed the exact same nozzle in a PLA filament with a lot of steel in it, and I put it back in the sand cup. Except this time I used a different kind of sand, because steel needs more temperature and the alumina sand couldn't handle it. By the way, if you're curious to see what happens when you take out the part right after the debinding stage, this is what happens. Work. So I had the steel part inside the ceramic cup with the sand and all the stuff ready to go into the kiln. But because I didn't really like the insane amount of time that I had to wait the last time, what I did was I called the inventor of the filament and I asked them if there was a way to shorten the thermal cycle. And he said, F*** you. <laughs> okay, this is what he actually said. Okay, so to shorten the sintering cycle, you can ramp at an even rate for three hours to the sintering temperature and then hold at the sintering temperature for another three to four hours. In total, the thermal cycle would amount to about six hours, which I know still seems like a lot of time, but trust me, it's not. I put the part on the kiln, watched all of the Lord of the Rings movies and then took it out. And I know some of you are gonna say that six hours is not enough to watch all of the movies, but remember, the part needs to cool. Yeah, eat that. Here we are once again. Here we are once again. Let me see if there's some carbon left. Okay, there's there's carbon left. There's not a lot of it. But uh that doesn't matter. As long as we have carbon. It's probable that everything went fine. Let me just remove it so I can use it again.
I think something went wrong. Oh, what a mess. I think it's simple. It's centered for uh, too long. It's completely melted. I mean, it's metal. All right. Well, let's try this again. Six hours later. Come on, kids. The cookies are ready. Okay. We have something. Here we have the result. Oh, wait. I need to focus. Oh. It's popping. The part is popping. As you can see, it's far from perfect. Oh shit, I almost dropped it. Um, but it's still, it's solid still. And um, I think I'm getting there. I'm gonna try and do the full cycle. No shortcuts this time. I'm just gonna stick to the, the full cycle and try to get the perfect part. Yep. 24 hours later. Not a lot of carbon left. Seems to be metal. There's still a lot of powder around it, uh, but it, it seems very solid. I need to I need to clean it and um, yeah, uh, maybe drill a hole into it just to make sure it's solid. And if that works, I have the perfect recipe. As I feel it, it seems very solid, but I'm not sure if it is. I need to make sure. Okay, so I made a hole in the nozzle. And as you can see, it's almost solid. Like there's about uh, half a millimeter that, that didn't sinter it, but the nozzle itself is it's still like it's basically a hollow nozzle in the walls, but everything else uh, it's still. So I'm gonna call it a half success. I think that's fine for now. Anyway, um, I don't have any more sintering carbon, so that's about it for me. I can't test no more until I get more. I'm gonna just polish the nozzle and make it beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah, it's true. I don't have any more sintering carbon, so I can no longer sinter any more steel parts. But as far as I know, I don't really have to. I mean, that nozzle seems fine to me. If only I had a rocket engine that I built a few videos ago to test a ceramic nozzle that has the exact same geometry as this one. Please focus. So I have here all that I need, the nozzle, the fuel, and the, not the engine, it's just, it's just too, I made it a long time ago. It's gonna work, I think. I need to clean it.
Okay, can you see me? You can. We are ready to test the rocket. So I'm gonna use um, the same alcohol and syringe method as the last time. I'm gonna inject some alcohol into the rocket, light it up, go to the oxygen and see what happens. Yeah! I, I only get one shot of this. Okay, injecting the alcohol. I'm gonna try to get as far into the, the fuel grain as possible. What you say? Done. Okay, it's burning. I'll tell you, Katrina. Oh my god! Yeah, it melted the steel. Oh. Can you see this, guys? I should probably I should probably throw some water on this. It's beautiful to watch though. Can you see that? And it's gone. Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was amazing. I mean, I still have to see the footage, but uh the exhaust was intense. And the nozzle is gone, that's true, but uh maybe I can do a, a cooled nozzle. I mean I know steel is not uh impermeable to, to temperature, but I can cool it. I can cool it and uh, it's much more resistant than, than the ceramic one. Yeah. Let's face it, this is not an impressive rocket engine. It's not an impressive achievement in rocket science and it's not even an impressive display of propulsion power. But let me be very clear, you should be impressed. I just found a way to make a steel nozzle with a complex geometry that using any other manufacturing process would be very hard to make, be very expensive and take a very, very long time. I mean, this one still takes a long time, but you know what I mean. Wait a second, are you bragging, Tagza? No, actually I'm giving praise to the people that made this process available to regular makers like myself. And those people are the people at the Virtual Foundry. If you want to try this for yourself at home, I'll leave a link in the description with everything you need to buy. I'll also leave my printing profile for the metal filaments and the 3D model for the Aerospike nozzle. You can easily 3D print these metal filaments with a regular 3D printer and a steel nozzle. But if you don't even have a 3D printer, don't lose hope right away. On my last video I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was Hi Justin and he suggested that I could make a vertical water rocket. How about an actual rocket? I think I might be able to do it now. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will receive a brand new 3D printer. This time I'm also giving away another 3D printer and all you need to do to win it is follow me on Instagram at IntechZ and tag me on a video story where you show me why you deserve the 3D printer. In this case I'll choose the winner myself, so it's all about making an impression on me. Well. Um, this is everything for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!